All right, so we're back. I talked just about a basic introduction to simple linear regression, uh, just as a, a very very intuitive overview. Um, now we're, I'm going to look at some data we might have to try to give you uh, give you an idea of what this might end up looking like in practice. So um, let me pull it open. Let me pull up pull up a table so that we can take a look at this directly. Okay, so let's look at some data we might have. We might have this data, right? So we want to look at the relationship between how much of a CEO's compensation comes from options, right, which is uh, this X variable right here, and how much uh, sales changes, um, which is this uh, right here. So how does sales change depend, oopsie daisy, there we go, depend on options as a percentage of a CEO's compensation? That's the question we want to answer. Now, this is not something we have the tools to answer yet, right? Uh, what we've been doing with uh, with hypothesis testing really only tells us um, what you know how one one variable changes. Now, maybe we could jury rig something with our uh, with our two ta uh, two sample um, hypothesis testing, where we take a sample that has you know a group of people where there's no sales compensation, sales option and compensation, and a group where there is some uh, options and compensation, um, and then try to test that. But that's really a, you know it's a rough example. This allows us to take advantage of the full variation. Okay, so what are we going to do first? Well. Let's, before we go any further, let's just take this data. We're going to put it into what's called a scatter plot. And the scatter plot generally looks like this. Right? We have is uh, we have some y data and some x data. I'm right on a crease here between pages. Let me copy this down a page. So what we want is we want to we want to graph this relationship. So let's throw this stuff down here. And I'll draw a scatter plot for you to see what this looks like. What we want to do is we want to visualize this, right? So what we're going to do is on the, uh, we're going to have a, a y axis here is the vertical axis, and x axis is the horizontal axis. So we'll label these. And y is going to be change in sales, right, over here, which uh, goes up to, let's put 30 here, go a little higher than that in practice, 15. Which makes this like 7.5, and this like uh, 22.5. X goes from 0 to 60, puts 30 in the middle, 15 here, and 45 here. So we want a scatter plot. All we do then is we take these pairs and we plot them, right? So we have one observation. Each of these is called an observation. We take that first observation where x is 60. And if x is 60, we see an observation where y is 29, right? So go up from here and across from here. And we'll have a point right here. I'll draw an x or a star. I'll make it a star so we're not confused about letters. So we have a star right there. We'll do the next one, 28 and 32. Go over in the x to 28. It's like right here. Go all the way up to 32. We have one right here, right? Start up there. The next one is 32 and 13. That's going to be, say, here-ish. doesn't have to be perfect. You just get the idea. Uh, 30 and 17 is going to be right here. The better way to do this is with Excel. If you don't have Excel, you don't, you don't need Excel to do this. And then last but not least, 0 and 4 is going to be right about here. Right? So that puts us right there. Now, this is a scatter plot. What we can do to try to, what we, what we can see with this relationship is essentially the, the sign, the sign of the relationship, by which I mean is it positive or is it negative, and that's really important. Um, and we can see that it appears to be positive, right? What that means is that as x gets larger, y gets larger as well, right? If we want to try to draw a line here to roughly um, see what this looks like, right, a line of fit. Uh, we're going to see that it's it's upward sloping, right? If we want to try to get, you know, it's going to look something like this, maybe. That's like the line of best fit, something that would uh, allow us to see how this might change. You can see that there's stuff that's, uh, you know, there's not dead on. This one's way up here, right? And this one's too low, and this one's too low. Um, but 
you know, that line at least gives some idea of where, you know, the direction of this relationship. It appears to be positive. The larger options is, is a percentage of CEO, say, uh, CEO compensation, the larger the change in sales seems to be. Okay, now the, the deal with regression is that we're going to assume that there's some true account of this relationship. Uh, what this looks like, the way we the way we write this is we draw a mo we write a model, um, and this is what the model is going to look like for now. So this is our simple linear regression model, and it always looks something like this. I'm writing this whole words out because this is what this is called. This is always what we're going to use. It's going to look like this: y equals alpha plus beta x plus epsilon um, and if you want to and I think actually I do this in my, my you can use that epsilon there are two variants of the epsilon maybe I should use that one I like the other one a little bit better to, to write in any case um, we can plug in our variables and just say well okay so percent sales equals percent change in sales sorry you undo that percent change in sales because that's how we're actually measuring our change in sales is equal to alpha plus beta times uh, percent options plus epsilon I've done it both ways now okay now if there's some true relationship and there is in this case because I happen to make up this data randomly um, we have, it might look like some, something like this. Let's say that in, in reality, alpha is 6 and beta is 0 0.5. Well, then maybe, then, then in real life, we would have percent change in sales is equal to 6 plus 0 0.5 times the percent options plus epsilon. Okay, now what, what do we have here? Well, on the left side, we have our independent variable. Um, right? Ooh. And that's, you know, that's the one where we care about. We're trying to figure out what is going on with our independent variable. Um, and right now that's percent change in sales. That's our dependent variable. On the right side, we have three terms. What three terms? Well, we have, uh, looks, let's look at the last one first. This is epsilon. All right, it's epsilon. And it's called the error term. And it is the key that makes this a stochastic relationship. Okay, it's our way for account of accounting for the fact the linear that the linear relationship is not going to perfectly match the data. It's also the thing that makes this a st statistical problem rather than just a de deterministic problem. We make some assumptions about this. Uh, the the biggest one is going to be um, we're going to make some assumptions about the expected value of epsilon that it's zero. Um, that it's, uh, and we're also going to make an, exp we're going to make some more assumptions. We're going to make an assumption about its uh, variance. Um, we'll worry about it later, uh, or we'll worry about it later in, in the sense that we will go through it at some length later. Uh, for now, we'll just know that it's an error term that it kind of takes what you get from the rest of this and it bumps it around randomly. That's what it does. It's random error that modifies what you get from the beginning part of this uh, right side. Um, but what we also have is we have two other parameters, right? So we, we have another variable, uh, which was our, our, our uh, regressor or our explanatory variable. That's the percent options. Then we have two parameters, alpha and beta. And uh, we can't know these. But if we wanted to guess what our percent change in sales was, our best guess, we can't account for this random error, right? That's just random error. But our best guess would be alpha plus beta times percent options, right? So these two, if we take whatever value we have of x, multiply by beta, add alpha, and that would be our best guess of y. It wouldn't be exactly right because, the, because of this epsilon that's, you know, that messes things up. Um, but if we did know alpha and beta, that would be our best guess. We can't know alpha and beta. It's the problem that we've had this whole time, right? We can't know alpha and beta because that's what's going on in the, in the, in the population, and we can never actually observe the population. So what we do is we take our sample to try to come up with estimates for alpha and beta. Just like we used x bar to estimate the value of mu x and s to estimate the value of the standard deviation of the population, um, we're going to use a to estimate the value of alpha. So these are going to be our estimators. Right? 
A is going to be our estimate of alpha. We're going to use B to estimate our value of beta. Okay. Now our estimates are going to be wrong, right? They're always we're always going to be wrong, but they're going to be pretty close. We can never get exactly right. We can get very very close. Um, and just like our uh, test statistics were estimates drawn from a random uh, from a sampling distribution, these these uh, estimators A and B, these are going to be these are estimators, but they're also random variables. Right, because they depend on on the data. I'll show you how they depend on the data, um, but they're random variables, which means that we can do with them the same thing we did with all of our uh, hypothesis testing. We can make inferences about what their what what the true value of the population parameters are based on our guesses about A and B, and that is going to be what we are doing. Okay, so that's the plan. Uh, let me lay out these uh, these parameters a little bit more. We have alpha, which is the intercept term. And we have beta, which is our uh, coefficient. Make sure I, yeah, I'm not missing anything. This is our coefficient on x, is what we call it. Now, these together make up, when we, when we throw these in, we get the regression equation. OK, so the regression equation uh, is the part you get when you get rid of the uh, no, it's no. Yeah, yep. Yeah, the regression equation is the part is is this y equals alpha plus beta x plus epsilon. Um, but we can't know what it is. So what we do? Uh, yeah. Hold on one sec. I just want to make sure I'm not making throwing you off. Okay. So we have our regression equation here. This is a regression equation, also known as the simple linear regression model. Uh, no, that's not the regression equation. Okay, so so what we really want to know, though, is what we can say about y, right? So we have the error. Epsilon is our error term, but if we can get rid of that. And on average, that's going to be 0. What that means is that the expected value of y is going to be alpha plus beta x. Right? This is called the regression equation. And it just says that on average, right, we can come up with the best guess for y by uh, taking our intercept term and adding a coefficient times whatever our observed value of x is. Okay. We call this intercept term the intercept term because it indicates where the regression line, which is given by our regression equation, intercepts the y-axis. So here's our y-axis and here's our x-axis. Um, and then if we want to throw in our regression line, well, it's going to look something like this. It might be upward sloping, it might be downward sloping, but it intercepts y at alpha, which is what happens when x equals 0. If x equals 0, then the expected value of y is alpha. But for every unit increase in x, right, this is 1, we have a beta change in y. That's beta is our coefficient. So what happens if beta is greater than 0? Well, then y increases with x. And that's a positive relationship. Call that positive. The correlation is going to be positive. If beta is less than zero, well, then they have a negative relationship. And then as y gets larger, uh, or as x gets larger, y decreases. Uh, if beta equals zero, then there's no relationship, right? So, if two things are totally unrelated, well, then beta is going to be zero. And the best you can say, knowing x, is uh, is going to be, you know, not a lot. Sorry, this this up here should actually say the expected value of y given x. So you can scratch that. Um, because once you know x, then you can infer something about y. That's what that is. That's the regression equation. Uh, gives us our regression line, um, and allows us to get rid of the uh, the random the randomness ultimately. So um, there is a true relationship uh, in in the example that I started with. Uh, we know what it is because it's, I because I chose it before I threw in the randomness. Um, and what we know then is that the expected value of the percent change in sales, given that we know uh, the percent of options in the CEO's compensation, is equal to 6 plus 0 0.5 times percent of options. What this means is that the tr on average, 
uh, we might have um, if CEOs get 50% of their compensation as options, then their uh, expected value of their percent change in sales is going to be 6 plus 0.5 times 50. It's going to be 25, 6 plus 25 equals 31. So you'd expect sales to increase 31% on average, right? Similarly, if you knew that uh, percent change in, if you knew that options was uh, what 30 percent, well then it would be six plus 15. We have uh, that's 21, right? So 21 percent increase. The problem, is, well, that one problem is that we have it. We do have an error. So we're not actually going to, you know, that's the expectation. What we're really going to happen is, uh, what's really going to happen is if we know the true underlying value then we can say well this is our percent change in sales given that the percent of options is 25 and it's going to be random right it's going to be random 20, uh, 31 is going to be the average but it might be here it might be here it might be here it might be here alternatively maybe we have we know that the percent of options is 15 well then we can say uh, that it's going to be centered at 21 now, but it still might be anywhere around. You know, we have some error that randomness throws us off. Um, but on average, uh, you know, that, that's that's the distribution, the mean of that distribution, right? That we're drawing our percent change in sales from uh, is centered around uh, around that regression line. So we plug in an X, it gives us a distribution. Now in practice, we don't really know uh, what that looks like. Right in practice, we don't know alpha and or beta. We can't observe that. So, um, what's going to happen when we draw a sample is we're going to estimate that. And very rare, usually, what's going to happen is that a does not equal alpha and b does not equal beta. Right? Usually, we're going to get be off by something. Right? We might get 5.85 plus 0.47x, or 6.72 plus. Uh, 0.53x, right? It's going to be off somehow, right? Because of the idiosyncrasies of our data. Um, we're going to estimate those. Um, but we're going to estimate them, right? We can estimate them. When we do estimate them, we come up with an estimated regression equation, sometimes just called the estimated equation. And that estimated regression equation looks like this y hat, so how we pronounce this, y hat equals a plus bx. This means that once we develop an estimate of a and an estimate of b, we'll talk about how to do that, um, we can plug in our value of x and get out a predicted value of y, the y hat, y hat, which is given by the symbol y with a little chapeau over the top, um, is the predicted value of y given x and our estimates. It's the best we can do with our data, the best prediction we can make. All right, so if we happen to be in a situation where we've gone through the process, we have an estimate of A, which is 6.45, and an estimate of B, which is 0 0.52, then our Y hat is going to be 6.45 plus 0 0.52 times X. Now, if we get an X of... 31%, right? CEO compensation, CEOs get 31% of their compensation as options. We would plug 31% in right here, and you get 6.45 uh, plus, um, what is that, 0 0.52 times 31. Uh, it's roughly 16. And so that gives you 22.45, would be your guess for the percent change of sales with those estimates. Okay, so that's one thing we can do once we estimate our parameters alpha and beta. Um, and that's the goal here, right? We have these parameters. We don't know what they really are, but we want to do the best we can with our data. And so we take this relationship, we take some data, and we estimate them. Next, we'll talk about how we come up with our estimates, uh, A and B.